Hey everyone, my name is Navid, and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to install Ruby on Rails on Mac OS. The first thing that you want to do is go over here to the Finder, and then in Applications, it's going to have all of our applications, and at the very bottom there's a folder called Utilities. Now inside of Utilities there's an application called Terminal, and we want to open that up to get to our command line. So this shell allows us to engage with the command line, and a quick command you can learn is clear, and that will give you a clean command line. You can also type in command plus to make the shell a little bit bigger to work with. Okay, so I'm just going to put this right over here for now, and that's really our first step, is just to have our terminal ready to go. Our next step is to open up Safari, and we just you can use any web browser, but the first thing I wanna do is just take you to rubyonrails.org, and that's just getting you familiar with what you're actually installing on your computer, and this is a good you know, starting point to get involved or engaged with the Rails community. So I would strongly recommend just exploring this website and uh, just seeing what you find, okay? Now to actually install Rails 7, which recently was released, we're going to install a few other tools off the internet first, okay? So let's get started. I'm going to get this set up and we will quickly roll through the installation. Okay, so the first place that I want to visit is brew.sh. So what we want to do is copy this command right here, and we want to hop over to our terminal. And now once we're back in the terminal, we can just paste that into the command line. Now let's go ahead and press enter. And then it's going to ask me for my computer's password for when I log in. So I'm going to enter that in. And now one of the dependencies for using Homebrew from the command line is having these Xcode command line tools installed. Xcode is totally separate from what we are doing, but you need these, these native Xcode command line tools in order to work with the command line in the way that we want. So we're gonna go ahead and press enter to make sure that we install these command line tools. Okay, so for now I've closed out of Safari and I just have the terminal shell running. It's downloading the command line tools and then this step may take a little bit of time. Once the command line tools have finished installing, then you will see the installation of Homebrew start to kick off. Okay, great. So once you get to this point, there's actually a couple steps you need to do. Notice here that we have the installation successful flag, but we also have this one right here that says next steps. And we need to run these two commands to add homebrew to the path. So if you notice up here, we get this warning that we don't have this path that exists. Copy this line right here. And then we want to paste that in our command line and press enter. And then the next thing that we want to do is copy this line and put that into our command line and press enter. Now we should be able to type in brew and that will allow us to interact with homebrew. So if I type in brew dash dash version, now I will get the version of homebrew that is installed on my computer or that we just installed. Let's clear the command line by typing in clear. Let's head over to Safari and we want to visit rvm.io because now we are ready to install Ruby on Rails. To install the latest version of rvm Ruby and Rails, we're gonna get this command right here and we wanna copy that and just throw it in the command line. We're gonna paste that in and we can just press enter. I'm gonna go ahead and close out of rvm.io and let you watch the installation, kind of like we did for Homebrew. Wait for the installation to complete. Once these steps are done, it's really a one-time thing, so you won't have to worry about it in the future. Okay, now you see that Rails is being set up, Ruby 3 was installed, and now Rails 7 is being installed 
from the command line. Once we finish, you're going to get to the bottom and you'll see that we'll have 35 gems installed and we want to go to our command line and just make sure that we have Ruby and Rails installed. So now if I type in Ruby dash dash version, it's going to tell me that I have Ruby 2.6.8, but really all we need to do to fix that is to close the terminal shell and open up a new one. Really 2.6.8 was used to install Ruby 3, I believe. So we can clear the command line and then now if we type in Ruby dash dash version, we're going to see it's Ruby 3.0. And if we type in Rails dash dash version, you'll see that now we have Ruby and Rails installed on our computer. So congrats, I mean you have Ruby on Rails on your machine and you can start developing web applications at this point. Our next step is going to be installing yarn on our computer. So to do that, we want to run brew install yarn. Great. So it says that yarn requires a node installation to function. You can install one with brew install node. So we need to run, I guess, brew install node. Let's let that finish out. So now we can run node dash version. So I believe you just need node.js to get um, yarn set up correctly. So brew install node, and then we run brew install yarn. Again, it's already set up. Now we can run yarn dash dash version, and now we get the version of yarn. Okay, so let's clear this out. Basically here are the steps. You're gonna run brew install node, and then after that, you're going to run brew install yarn, and that will get yarn set up on your computer. Our next step is to install PostgreSQL on our machine, and Postgres is going to be the relational database that we use when building our Rails applications. To do that, let's just jump into Safari and look at some documentation. We can go to wiki.postgresql.org. Let me make sure I spelt that right. wiki.postgresql.org and that will take us to the wiki documentation for Postgres. Now in the search bar, just type in Homebrew and that will show you how to install PostgreSQL using Homebrew. So just like Yarn, we're gonna run brew install PostgreSQL. We're gonna let that finish up and once that finishes, we want to grab this line right here that says brew services start PostgreSQL. After we clear the command line, we can paste that in and, and run brew services start PostgreSQL. Now we've actually started the Postgres service on our machine. And if we want to connect to Postgres, we can just type this into the command line and now we have a connection that's made to our Postgres database. We can type in exit to come back to the command line and type in clear. And we should be able to check the version of, home, of Postgres on our machine by typing in PostgreSQL, or maybe we can type in pg-version, Postgres-version, here we go. So if you type in Postgres dash dash version, it'll show you the version of Postgres on your computer. We can close out of Safari, clear the command line. And now just to quickly run through everything that we just did, we want to type in brew dash dash version to get the version of homebrew that we installed. We can type in RVM dash dash version, and that shows you the version of RVM that was put on our computer to install Ruby. So Ruby, which is version three comes up just like that by typing in Ruby dash dash version and then rails dash dash version like that will give you the version of rails that we just installed, which is rail seven. Next, we want to make sure that we have yarn set up. We can type in yarn dash dash version. And one of that depend, one of the dependencies for yarn is actually to have node on there. So make sure you can run these two commands. And then finally, um, we can run postgres dash dash version to see the version of postgres that we have installed. 
So at this point, this is everything that we've installed on our computer to set up our environment uh, for Ruby on Rails development. So I hope you really enjoyed this video. That's all I have for you. At this point, you're really ready to get started and to move forward as a Ruby on Rails developer. So congratulations. Uh, it might have been a little time consuming, but if you follow the steps, should be a pretty straightforward guide. All right, wish you the best. Have a good one. And if you haven't already, please visit www.swiftruby.com for the latest content um, from this channel and just from content that I'm producing around Ruby on Rails and software development. All right, cheers. Have a good one.